Take us in a little little tour here of some of your gear and how what happens when you get a project in and uh, how you approach it. Well, what are the steps? Particularly for vinyl, I would say. For vinyl, um, a lot of the stuff that I, when somebody's doing something for vinyl, a lot of the time um, they will do for like a digital release as well. So Yeah, yeah, which I, that's my plan as well. So how do you kind of prepare that du dual... Well, it does, it, it adds more time if I'm going to be mastering for both formats. Um, but I have to know if it's if it's going to be released on vinyl first because I there's certain things that I'll approach um, in certain ways. But, um, well, I'll just give you a little tour of some of my gear here. Yeah. Um, you know, over the past, I guess, four years, I've been just kind of putting together, like, the best analog chain that I can. Um... So this is my Crane Song head. It's a really nice um, analog to digital, digital to analog converter. It just basically, you know, in order to get out of the computer and all these knobbies and stuff, it, it, you have to have that. Um, the Manly Massive Passive, which it's a uh, passive stereo EQ. This thing is, <laughs> it just sounds amazing. Um, it really has the ability to make things just sound 3D and real, and, uh, you know, I love this thing to pieces. Um, the Pendulum uh, OCL2, it's an optical compressor. It's really smooth. It's not something that I push really hard, but it's something where if uh, something's a little too dynamic, maybe vocals are really jumping out of a mix, or, you know, drums are a little too too bitey, it really tames things in a very gentle and kind of beautiful way. Um, this down here is the uh, Evanson mid side box, and this is really cool. I just got this, I don't know, maybe a year ago. Uh, and this really helps with the vinyl side. Um, something about vinyl is you can't have a lot of um, bass information. Um, like, you, it's really bad if you have like a ton of bass on one side and not enough, not a lot on the other. Um, it will make, it, depending on how the phase relationship and a bunch of nerdy stuff, um, it can make the needle jump out of the record. So this little box allows you to shave off the low end of the side information, but keeping stuff that's panned down the middle still bassy, and that's where your bass guitar and your kick drum and stuff is going to be anyway. So this is a, a pretty... Uh, neat little box. Um, so, you know, I do probably 60% uh, of my tonal shaping out of the box, and I still do some stuff in the computer. There's just certain things that the computer does well. There's certain things that Analog Gear sound does better. Um, so, I guess, you know, when I get a project in, um, I'll usually kind of spend, you know, maybe a half hour um, listening to the songs in order, getting a feel for um, what, you know, the work it's going to entail, um, listening for any potential issues, whether there is a lot of sibilance and, you know, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, I'll listen to just the low end um, and look at my phase scopes to make sure that... Um, I'm not going to have any surprises when I send the master to the, the guy that does the cutting. Um, and, you know, then I'll just kind of go through, usually start a song one, um, or the song that sounds best, and kind of get that sounding the best I can. And then uh, just go from song to song, and uh, pay attention to things that jump out of the mix, um, and I'll kind of limit those in a frequency-specific sort of way. Um, Really, it's just trying to get what going from one song to the next, um, making it a, a natural transition and not like a jarring kind of thing. And making sure that the record, it feels like a record as opposed to a collection of, you know, different songs. And for for the dual uh, release, like of a, a vinyl, so, so what, for instance, what I'm planning at this point is a... Is an LP 12 inch with uh, a CD slipped in uh -huh. that people can then rip and put on their iTunes or whatever, how yeah. they like to consume it or put it in their car. Um, would you literally do 
a, an, a, an, a sort of mix for vinyl and a mix for digital, or would it be kind of a compromise? Um, it's usually, I'll, I'll kind of treat them the same way. It really depends, um, but I have, I don't know if you want to zoom in here, um, but basically I'll come I, around. I come around. yeah, I have like two channels. I've got one called LP and then, uh, oh, I see, yeah, yeah one called CD. And it's basically just the one I record without uh, overall peak limiting and um, you know soft clipping or anything like that. That's kind of the uh, the cheater way to get thing really loud. Um, so with the vinyl stuff, I won't put a limiter on that side, um, or I won't limit it as hard. And basically, it's just the vinyl is going to the snares are going to pop a little more. Um, it's going to feel a little more open. Um, but sonically, it will be the same for the CD and the vinyl. It's just, like I said before, people don't really care whether their record is screaming loud. Yeah. So I basically will kind of treat tonally the same, um, both sides, but just the one will be, like, not limited and kind of compressed. Okay. So, does and that make sense? I think so, yeah. And what's this, uh, what's this analog tape machine over here? Uh, this is my Otari MTR-10. Um, it's a quarter-inch uh, stereo um, tape machine. Um, three speeds, 7.5, 15, and 30. Um, I think I do, actually. But this is my band. Um, we what just, is your band called? Um, Swarm of Bats. We're like a little stupid uh, garagey punk rock band. Um, but, you know, um, I had, I picked this up, uh, maybe about a year ago and, um, uh, had it gone through completely, um, you know, cleaned up, made sure the heads were fine and it's kind of nice. Um, I have this, so if someone wants to bounce their digital mixes to tape, um, to kind of get that analog sound, you know, kind of the, the natural tape compression. I offer that as a service that's like, you know, one more step that you can go through. Or, if somebody has recorded completely to analog, mixed to tape, um, then they can bring their master tape here and, you know, go straight from tape into the, you know, the final digital realm. So, I, it's it serves a couple purposes, um, but uh, it's just, you know, an added, uh, uh, added, uh, Flex, flexibility, I guess, for people. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, I uh, I love analog stuff. You know, I'm surrounded by it, but I also, you know, there's a place for the digital stuff too. So it's just kind sure. of like a good marriage between the two. Well, thank you very much for for walking us all through. Is there anything yeah. that I kind of left out that you think, say, someone was stumbled upon this with questions about the sort of process? Is there some significant things that I didn't mention? Uh, yeah. Um, louder doesn't mean it's better. <laughs> I guess that's it. All right. So cool. Thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah.